we're analyzing Archer Daniels Midland Company stock ticker ADM to see if it's a great business on sale. This analysis is around 10 minutes. It's going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for ADM. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Archer Daniels Midland for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand ADM stock performance. Right now, Archer Daniels Midland trades for $82.14 per share. Year to date, their stock price is down 8.5%. In the last five years, it's a different story. Archer Daniels Midland is compounding at 11.5% annually. The company's up more than double from their lows in spring of 2020. In the last 10 years, they're compounding at 8% annually. Going back before the global financial crisis, Archer Daniels Midland is compounding at 6.5% annually over the last 18 and a half years. Archer Daniels Midland is a dividend king. They've grown their dividends in each of the last 50 years. Right now, they pay an above average 2.07% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield over this time is added on to their returns in their stock price. Archer Daniels Midland trades $16 below their 52-week high. The company's $12 above their 52-week low. Just over 1% of their shares are sold short. Archer Daniels Midland is a big company. They have a $45 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Archer Daniels Midland? Archer Daniels Midland is a major processor of oil seeds, corn, wheat, and other agricultural commodities. Additionally, the company owns an extensive asset of logistical assets to store and transport crops across the globe. ADM also runs a nutrition business that focuses on both human and animal ingredients. The company is also a large producer of corn-based sweeteners, starches, and ethanol. Now with that understanding, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Archer Daniels Midland has seen their returns on capital improve since 2020. They earned about 12% returns in their last fiscal year. Averaged out over this time, they earn about 7.5% average returns on capital in a given year. That's just around average, meaning this is down from our benchmark. Benchmark. This is an X on metric number one. Uh, metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see five year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers. All three need to be up for this to be a check. This is all or nothing. In this time, ADM's grown their revenues by 58%, their earnings are up two and a half times, and their free cash flows have gone from being negative to being positive. From 2018 until 2020, Archer Daniels Midland has had big changes in other net operating assets. This reduced their free cash flows by nearly $20 billion. While all three of these are up and this is a check on metric number two, you need to understand what these changes were in their operating assets in order to really get a good understanding of the business's recent financial history. That's something to dig into. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. As we just learned, their earnings have grown by two and a half times. In this period, ADM's diluted shareholders by one and a half percent. That small shareholder dilution that's being outpaced by their earnings growth. Archer Daniels Midland has grown their earnings per share. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. A similar situation, their free cash flows have grown due to their changes in their other net operating assets from 2018 until 2020. Archer Daniels Midland had negative free cash flow per shares in all of these years. Since then, as the company has not had these same changes, their free cash flows are positive, meaning their free cash flows per share are up. This is a check on metric number four. To recap where we stand currently, Archer Daniels Midland has three checks and only one X through four metrics. During recessions, it's over the levered businesses that can have the biggest losses. Metric number five, we want ADM's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Archer Daniels Midland ended their last year with just over $9 billion in net debt. Right now, they have $10.6 billion of net debt. In the last five years, including their changes in their other net operating assets, Archer Daniels Midland has consumed cash in their business. They have negative free cash flows. This means this is an X on metric number five. In their last 12 months, the company's produced $1.6 billion of free cash flow. That's not enough to fully cover their net debt position either. Dig into the company's filings to see if this could cause issues for the business. Before we get into the first of two different ways we're estimating a value for Archer Daniels Midland, you won't want to miss our bonus. 
As our bonus, we're looking at Archer Daniels Midland's dividend profile. Archer Daniels Midland is a dividend king. They've grown their dividends in each of the last 50 years. Right now, they pay an above average 2.07% dividend yield. No surprise that they've grown their dividends in each of the past five years as well. We're looking to see if this has been supported or not. In these last five years, because of what we've already noted, they've only had positive free cash flows in two of these. Thankfully, they supported their dividends in their last two fiscal years. They also support these today. While we'd rather the company supported their dividends in all five of these years, it's mainly due to restructuring that the company has not. They support their dividends currently, meaning this is a check on our bonus. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want ADM's average five-year free cash flow to divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating ADM's fair value per share. Right now, Archer Daniels Midland has a $55.5 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position. It looks at ADM similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we've learned they've had negative free cash flows as the company's consumed cash due to consecutive changes in their other net operating assets. On a current basis, with Archer Daniels Midland producing $1.6 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months, when that's divided by their $55.7 billion enterprise value, it gives us around a 3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are coming in below the yield of the 10-year treasury. On metric number six, this is an X for Archer Daniels Midland. Don't just throw this business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our final rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Archer Daniels Midland, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of ADM's last three fiscal years worth of free cash flow, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate for the business or not. Assuming they grow their average three-year free cash flows at 2% annually for the next decade. Then in the following decade, assuming these free cash flows are flat, we'll add in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Archer Daniels Midland's fair value per share is around $51.5. That's down about $30 from their current stock price. Keep in mind some key points. ADM has not been that predictable in their past, even though they have this very long dividend track record. Some of this has come from company scandals, including one in the late 1990s that just so happened to be while Warren Buffett's son Howie was working at the company. They've also had $20 billion worth of changes in net operating assets from 2018 to 2020 alone. That's about 40% of their current enterprise value, meaning that was a huge chunk of their business, you need to understand what's happening there. Also, this discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It includes both their dividend yield and any gain in their stock price. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Archer Daniels Midland, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for ADM's business. What are they? Well, let's find out. Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, as a major processor of soybeans, a key component in animal feeds, ADM should benefit as emerging economies consume more meat. Number two, ADM's investments in building a global nutrition business can create value for shareholders as the company continues to expand its product portfolio. Number three, with a global network of processing, storage, and transportation assets, ADM has scale advantages over regional competitors. Its trade operations are often able to generate arbitrage opportunities from extensive market knowledge produced by the global origination and logistics network. But it's not fair if we don't cover the negatives as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, as a trader of commodity products, ADM is essentially a price taker competing in a market where similar products are available from rivals. Number two, profitability is subject to operating rates in each segment, which can be negatively affected by a number of factors out 
outside ADM's control. Number three, grain merchandisers, including ADM, can continue to face structural headwinds as farmers and grain buyers have better access to price information. This can limit trading profits over the long term. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of the business. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Archer Daniels Midland, stock ticker ADM, we learned this dividend king has grown in their last five years. They earned just above average returns on capital. Even though they've diluted shareholders, they've still grown on a per share basis. It doesn't look like they fully support their debt positions using either their average or current free cash flows. After making significant changes to their operating assets, they have supported their dividends in each of the last two fiscal years and today. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. ADM's free cash flow to enterprise value yields don't look attractive to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, you believe those assumptions and you want a 15% rate of return. An estimate of ADM's fair value per share is around $51.5. They last traded at those levels at the beginning of 2021. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Archer Daniels Midland looks like a moderate candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about ADM, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about ADM with me, and have a great day.